Hey guys, Steven over at KR Motorsports. Uh, as you, if you guys have been following us and watching our shorts, you know that we've been doing the SR20 Swap Miata. So I wanted to kind of give you an overview on how Autotune works. Um, so if you look here, this is a very, very poor map that we use just to start the car, okay? So um, once you get the car started, you know, you're just gonna, what I normally do is I'll highlight the entire table and I'll just put in an arbitrary number to get the car started and run. Once it starts to warm up, I will start to trim this area here. This, this down here is like the idle area. But the first thing you need to do, besides getting the car running, <clears throat> to get auto-tune to work, uh, you need to set up your your AFR target. So that's this table here. So if you look, that's uh, AFR Lambda number one. This is going to be either AFR or Lambda. You have to set it up in the, in the general settings. If you look over here, general you can see down there afr uh i personally do lambda but you know some people most people seem to have a better understanding of how afr works anyways so you basically punch in your lambda targets and, or afr targets and this is what i have here so basically right if you start once you start going into boost it starts to go rich and then all the way up here to you know 28 pounds of boost it goes to like 11 to 1. this is very basic at the moment okay so this is not our final AFR lambda table this is just to get me close to get the cruising area done so what do you do now well you start the car you run it and with the EMU the moment that you plugged in uh, it's already logging okay and it logs a ton of parameters so how it works is that it looks at your actual lambda or AFR and then it compares it to how far off it is and then it shows the difference on the VE table. So since we already have a graph done of me driving around, we're gonna go to auto-tune. And so here's the thing, these are filters, okay? So like, you know, if it's below 500 RPMs, it's not looking at it. If it's above 15,000 RPMs, it's not looking at it either. So I don't like to do, I like to keep this at like one to two, on TPS because I don't like it adjusting for idle. Idle is actually extremely hard to tune, believe it or not. As simple as it sounds, there's a lot of things happening. So when I'm just trying to do the cruising, I put it at 2% to eliminate that. And this is what it generates here, okay? So if you look at these values versus what I have, you can see that, let me put them side by side here. You can see that they're vastly different. The, another really cool thing too is that if you click on the box over here, you'll see that it highlights the actual fuel map and you can see the difference. So another way you can do it too is up here on the toolbar, if you do difference, it'll actually show you the difference of how, how far off your AFR was, okay? So let's go back here and then this is what it generates. So you still gotta do, uh, you still gotta, be smart about this okay sometimes it will do things that especially on D cell because it doesn't really know any better it can cause it to do a lot of weird stuff so it still requires like a human so this will definitely get you in the ballpark here right so what you do here is if you look at these and it looks sensible to you then you just uh, you know as usual hit control a then hit s and then it'll change the values on the side and if you look here you see these little yellow boxes that means that that's what it's changed now there is another functionality. <clears throat> if you don't want to use these entire values, you can actually do uh, Control A and then Alt S, and then it'll only use half of those values. So for instance, here uh, this was 91. Over here this was like 70. So it would split the difference. You know, so it wouldn't have copied 91. It would only copy say 80 or so. Okay, and that works too. Okay, so now this is done. What do you do now? You you'd hit F2 to save it. Uh, car is not on right now, or the key's not on right now. So you'd hit F2 to save it, and then you would basically go back to your graph, and then you would clear this. The reason why you clear it is that it would still try to factor in this old data, even though it's changed now, okay? And then, so we're gonna go back to this. So this is the fuel table. Hold on, let me get this in the right orientation for you guys. Whoop. So this down here is idle. This is like the wide open throttle. This is what it's changed. And you can see how much it's changed on its own, okay? 
So remember, if you don't hit if you don't hit those areas, it cannot tune for it. Okay? But let's be sensible about it, okay? You know, you're never going to be able to tune this area up here. Why is that? Well, you're never, I mean, 500 RPM, 1200 RPM at 20 pounds of boost, it's it's never going to happen, you know, like ever. So, and then same thing with here. Um, I mean, I guess this is more reasonable, but 7,500 at 30 to 40 KPA, I mean, you would be really ginger on the throttle to get there, you know? So what we use, we use this to kind of fill in the blanks. And I only use this for cruising. I don't really use this for boost at all because I don't think it's that accurate. Um, but I can basically use common sense though, right? Okay, so we know that like here, it's 91. Oops, sorry. So we know here this is 91, that's what it added. We can easily assume that all of this is going to be higher than 90, you know? So we can do an arbitrary number like 120, right? And then we can basically go from this value that we know is good and then just interpolate it here. And that gives us like a relatively decent chunk right there. And then from there, we can kind of interpolate it the rest of the way. So, you know, these values again, virtually impossible to get to. So we'll just interpolate down, which is a uh, control L. And then we can look at these values. These are the auto-tune values here. Boop. And we can go across, we can interpolate it over. And then you can see on the 3D side of it, it's starting to build the map, right? And you just kind of rinse and repeat that over and over and over until you get it. Now, is auto-tune useful? Yeah, it's a great useful tool. Is it something that you should just, you know, throw all caution to the wind and just believe in it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Um, it's great for when you're doing cruising stuff and even light wide open throttle stuff, you know, just getting into the low boost to kind of fill in the blanks for you a little bit here, just to kind of give you an idea of where it needs to be. But now do keep in mind though, you know, if you're getting into the boost without checking this table at all, you will blow your car up trying to do auto team. So be sensible about it, be smart about it. The way I do it, um, the way I do it anyways, is I will get into first or second gear and I'll just go half throttle and I'll ride it all the way out, you know? And then I'll see, okay, yeah, we're not in boost. This is kind of what we're seeing. And then let's just say that this number here while we're cruising, let's just say that's 110. So what I would do on the next sell up was I'd, I'd add 30 to 40%. You know, and that would kind of give us a margin for error. It's better to be, to an extent, of course, it's always better to be little rich than lean, right? But then you just go back and you rinse and repeat that. And that will get your fuel table dialed in. Now, keep in mind, guys, base maps aren't what most people think. Base maps are just maps to get the car started. Uh, most base maps, again, sometimes won't even start the car. Hell, this is actually the ECU Masters base map for the SR20. And it's pretty generic, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Again, it's only designed to get the car started. It's not optimized in any way, but you gotta look at this and make sure that it has sensible values, you know? Uh, if you've never tuned before, you go, okay, well, what's a sensible value for my particular engine? Try to find someone who's done it, you know? Try to find someone who's done it. And if it's a, mo a relatively modern engine, like something that's like, you know, 2005-ish, you know, you can know that your cruising area is probably gonna be like in the high 30s, if not 40s, you know? And then in boost, the general rule of thumb is to take this value. So this value is 27. And for every one PSI, you just remove two degrees of timing. You know, that's just what we've always kind of started off with. And you can see that it slowly tapers down and then it gets more aggressive up top. So, you know, just try to use sensible values. You know, all, all engines are more or less the same. And take it slow, guys. Definitely take it slow. Take it literally one to two PSI at a time. Go one to two PSI at a time, and that's all controllable. That is all controllable through your right foot on the gas pedal. You know what I mean? And use that to get a rough idea of where you need to be. Now, ignition is definitely a lot harder, but like I said, you know, you can always start off slow, slow and short. But the problem with that is that you can increase EGTs a lot, which will cause turbos to spool a lot different. So again, sensible values. You know, um, every engine is a bit different. You know that is for sure. But like I said, just you know take into account like how how this car is and if you don't even know where to start like if you really don't know where to start at all and you can't find anyone to that has an ignition map you know 
be smart about it. You know, especially if the car had a stock ECU and it ran on the stock ECU, you could easily log timing with an external logger, whether it's an OBD2 port or if your car doesn't even have an OBD2 port, you can buy things to look to measure ignition timing and then use that to make smart judgments, you know? Um, unfortunately, I went off on a tan tangent there. It was supposed to be all about auto-tune. So hopefully... Uh, you guys learned something from that. But yeah, that's essentially how Autotune works. Um, the EMU on Autotune anyways, you have to do it log by log. If you're using, uh, say, a Mega Squirt uh, with v Veal, V-E Analyze Live, it will actually change these values on the fly as you're driving. So um, unfortunately, the ECU Masters doesn't do that. And I, you know, I use both and I think they're both pretty good in their own aspects and they both have their issues. So, you know, with uh, the EMU Autotune, you know, you have to do it log by log. Uh, with the Mega Squirt stuff, sometimes it makes adjustments that's a lot greater than I think it should be, you know. Um, so, you know, they both have their pros and cons, but they both do the same thing. They both are just there to kind of get you into the ballpark, you know. Um, again, this is basically as far as I will go with Autotune, which is like, you know, one to two PSI here. You know, I may, and from there, you know, I will manually go through it by just adding more throttle. So this basically here um, represents like about half throttle. Once I apply these settings, I'm gonna go drive through it again, all in one log, and then I'll go like three quarter throttle to let it come up a little bit more. And then that way, obviously after I do this whole interpolation like I did down here, um, you know, I'll go three quarter throttle just to get a little bit more boost in it and just kind of see how those values line up. You know, and from there I'll say, okay, well, if three quarter throttles, uh, seven pounds of boost generates this, assumingly if I go wide open throttle, I should be adding 30 to 25 to 30% more, you know? And, you know, I probably will add probably closer to something to 40% or so. And then that way, again, it, it's going to be better rich than lean. So hopefully you guys get something out of this. Uh, sorry that it was so long winded, but uh, that's really about it though.